So I want to talk to you all today about how we can turn our childhood adversity into something that will work in favor of our destiny. So this message will be about how our childhood adversities can equip us for our destiny. Now, yesterday I put up a video and I was talking about being blacklisted and I had put in there, I had a little excerpt when I talked about how I was going to private schools and I could feel like somebody was insanely jealous because I said I was going to private school. And it didn't make any sense because it's like, out of that entire message, out of all the suffering I had to do, you picked up the fact that I went to private school and you became upset. So first of all, I went to private school. Yes, I did go to private school, but I did not have a good life. Everybody thinks that things come easy to me. And, and this is why I talk about what happened in my past. Because see, we're supposed to talk about when we share our testimony, we talk about what happened, where God has brought us from. That's why I bring it up all the time. It's not to boast, but some people get so triggered because they did not have a good childhood and they get so triggered because one little good thing happened for me and they're so so caught up in it that they're, they're, they're still haven't healed and they, they still have past wounds and traumas of how they were treated because their families or whatever did not, they did not get the love that they wanted and needed. And so they get so triggered when I talk about this. But, you know, my, my childhood was not good. Yes, I, I went to private schools, but we were dirt poor, okay? We were dirt poor. When I say poor, we were poorer than probably 90% of people, okay? We were, we were very poor. When I say poor, how many of you lived in a house, one house where you slept in one room, one bed between your mother and father? I was, I was in that situation. I was 12 years old. We had rats and roaches crawling around everywhere. It was, it was just comfortable. We just sit there and eat and, and, and a roach fell from the ceiling and it's our food. Hey, we just kept it moving because it, it didn't even, it didn't phase us no more. That's, we, we, I would get up in the middle of the night and, and walk into the kitchen, turn the lights on, see rats scurrying across the floor. It was, it was that we didn't care because that's how we lived it. And, and it was a squalor. We lived in squalid conditions. Okay. It was very impoverished. We had no money. We didn't have a car. Me and my mother drove and we walked everywhere. We caught multiple buses, three buses, and we would walk. Okay. We walked and carrying groceries, carrying laundry, carrying everything. I, 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 we, 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 we were faithfully in, 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 in the welfare office. Okay. Getting government cheese. Yes. I remember government cheese. There were times we didn't have anything. We made powdered milk. Okay. So I didn't have the luxuries. Okay. My mother sacrificed. She had very little one monthly welfare check and she took that check and she sacrificed all my education. But you know, by private school education, it was not a good thing for me because I had to deal with constant ridicule and constant mistreatment. I sat in class because people would always pick on me and they were jealous. I didn't understand why everybody was so jealous of me. There was nothing wrong with me. And I couldn't understand why people were always teasing me and picking on me. And I sat in that classroom afraid to move, afraid to, to answer questions because I was intelligent. But I, every time I raised my hand or said something, they would laugh at me and snicker. Kids were always picking on me. And so I rarely said anything. I rarely raised my hand, but the few times I did speak that the teachers were just like impressed and in awe because they didn't realize how intelligent I was because I never said a word. And when then I would put my, I was so insecure because people were always laughing at me and these girls were insanely jealous of me. And we went to a private school. My mother was so poor that I only had two uniforms. She didn't have enough money to buy me a bunch of uniforms. And so I was washing this uniform out every single day. I was washing my shirt out at night and it, it got to the point where the sleeves were turning yellow at the bottom. The sleeves were turning yellow. And so I would go to school with these yellow dingy sleeves and it looked like I wasn't clean. And so this group of girls, I was walking through the hall one day and it was so humiliating. And this one girl just, she didn't even know me. She was in, you know, just walking with a group of friends and they decided to just talk about me. She said, look at her. Oh, I'm scared to be around her. She looked like she got something. Look at her sleeves. Ooh, I don't, I don't want to catch it. I'm staying away. I'm trying to stay back. And everybody's looking. It was so humiliating. And I, I just kept a straight face, kept walking, even though it hurt me. I held in all my pain and it was like, this was constant. I had people, I'm in seventh grade and in ninth grade and I'm being teased by 12th graders who didn't even know me, just talking about me for no reason. And I didn't realize it then, but they were insanely jealous. And it was the anointing that was on my life. I was ostracized and mistreated. It's like, I would wear these same girls who would laugh at me and wanted nothing to do with me and would humiliate me publicly and shame me in front of everybody. They would come back. I would have my hair a certain way and they would wear their hair. And I see them a few days later wearing their hair exactly like how my hair was. See, I had my own style. I, 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 I did things on my own. I wasn't, a, I wasn't a follower and always had that mindset. And, you know, people wanted to break me down. And I, I, I suffered. I ate in the bathroom in school. I didn't go to the table because I didn't have anybody. I go, people looking at me, they didn't want to be my friend. They didn't, for no reason. And I was an attractive girl and I couldn't even have dates. Me and they would be insanely jealous of that. You know, when there was Valentine's Day, our boys gave me balloons. They'd be jealous. They'd be, getting, they'd be jealous. And there were men, even that boys, men came up to me after I graduated high school, long after we were out of school, said, I used to like you in school, but I ain't saying that to you. And I'm like, well, why? You know, they didn't want to admit it. They were afraid to talk to somebody who was being teased and mistreated all the time. Not only that, I'm sitting in, in, in my house, my own family was sometimes jealous of me, would mistreat me for no, no apparent reason, call me dumb and stupid. And I had to go through this and making comments and laughing because I sleep in the same bed with my mother and my father. And it was humiliating. 
humiliating. I had people who mistreated me. And it's like, I didn't grow up and have this good life. Yeah, the only thing I had was that my mother sacrificed and sent me to a private school, but that private school was torture. I was teased and picked on to the point I had to even just drop out. I dropped out. I couldn't deal with it no more. And I ended up, you know, I went on getting, getting, getting my general education diploma, my equivalency diploma, and going to community college for two years, but I had the intelligence in me where I could have been a scholar. I could have gone to Ivy League school. I wanted those things. And see, people get so jealous that they don't understand what you've gone through. But see, I was alone and I was shamed my entire life. And I used to be upset at God because, you know, I, I suffered so much. And it's like, sometimes my mother, me and her would, would be going and it's like we were, she was, it would, she would be combative sometimes towards me. Sometimes we didn't speak. I would go two weeks sitting in the house at 12 years old. My mother not even speaking to me. And the Lord let me know that, hey, these people have put out, you know, curses to, 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 to separate your mother and to just draw her away from your, your love. And it's like, I didn't have the love. I didn't feel no one's love. I felt completely alone. I'm being picked on and teased in school, publicly shamed and humiliated, lied on, and, 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 and mistreated by all my peers. Then I go back home. I didn't have anybody love me there. I'm mistreated by my family, or, or I'm, I'm isolated, and my, nobody's around me, and I'm struggling to the point where I have no love. But see, I took that adversity and that pain, and that equipped me for what God meant for me to be today. See, I wouldn't have been the person that I am today strong enough to stand against adversity, strong enough to walk alone. And a lot of people are thinking, how can she walk alone? See, I, I, I don't care about what people, nobody think of me because, see, I, I, I was used to many years of being laughed at and teased and picked on. I was used to being shunned and rejected at an early age that I, it equipped me, it strengthened something up in me. And so it's like the, the, the diversity that you're going through, yes, you might have had it hard. You might have been mistreated or something happened to you. But see, when you hold on to that pain and keep licking your wounds and want to be a victim, and never use it. And you want to lash out at other people because you don't even know their life. You don't even know this person's life. But you you jealous because one good thing happens to this person. You don't know which shoes that person had to walk. And you don't know the humiliation and shame that they face on a daily basis. But you sitting here because you ain't get a good life or mama and daddy didn't do this. And this is what I'm saying. This is why I talk about this all the time. Because see, you don't understand that, yes, what happens to you is wrong. But God allowed some stuff to, 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 to grow up in you. You, you, you. you develop the resistance. There's something in you, that, uh, some type of strength that everybody just don't have. You have to go through some type of fire and tribulation to obtain these type of talents and attributes that God has been putting inside you and developing through your adversity. But you don't understand it because you're too busy feeling sorry for yourself and sympathizing and licking your wounds. That you don't understand that God is trying to use the work and the development. And he had you go through that for a reason. He allowed you to go through that so it could bring up something you said he could use in you today to free others and you ain't you ain't getting it because you see you too you too jealous and too mad and too resentful and you still hold on to the pain and you ain't letting god heal you if i would have sat there blaming god for the rest of my life mad because i was teased and i had friends at school and my family didn't accept me and i was an outcast i couldn't be talking to you right here right now i couldn't be doing the things that i'm doing god could have used me the way he's using me and see, you ain't trying to get it because you don't want to get it. You want to feel sorry for yourself and act like you're the only person who ever dealt with persecution, but you ain't. There's so many things you don't know what anybody has gone through. We talk about our story because, see, we want you to get up. It ain't for you to stay in it. God didn't let you go through it to stay in it. He lets you go through it so you can get up and get out of it and overcome it and help somebody else overcome it. That's what it was. It wasn't there to make you pathetic or pitiful. It's there to make you powerful. But you ain't letting it make you powerful because you're still holding on to that pain. But he says, I made you this way. I got some in you see the, the, the devil, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And if you are an anointed person, if you're an anointed child, a lot of times the enemy sets up things to happen to you. And this is why you see, see when, when you are anointed, a lot of times your parents were anointed too. And anointing goes down the entire lineage. The it goes down the entire generation. This is why a lot of times when you suffer a sin and, and something happens to you, you may, you were abused and, and molested, or maybe your mama was abused and molested too, and it happened to you, or it happens to your kids, you see, that enemy want to throw that same thing at you to hinder you, he know what stopped your family, and so see, he see that a call and anointing on your life, and he want to use that same thing that got your parents stuck, and your granddaddy and your grandparents stuck, and he want to use the stick, make you get stuck, but it, see, and you ain't going to let it get you stuck, see, when you're working with God and his Holy Spirit, he going to empower you, and he ain't going to let that thing trip you up and stumble you, he's he going to enlarge from your steps, but you got to let him, so you can't keep holding on so you got to break off those generational curses and those generational sins and bonds and say, hey, you did it to me, devil. You ain't going to do it to my son. You ain't going to do it to my daughter. You ain't going to do it to my grandchild. You ain't going to do it to me. I ain't going to walk in the same way as my daddy did. Yeah, my daddy was on drugs and it stopped with them. But look, I'm going to overcome. 
I'm going to overcome. And that is why God allowed you to go through that abuse. He did not put it upon you. The enemy did, but God allowed it to strengthen you, to equip you. He did not allow it to, to hinder you. He didn't allow it for it to cause you to stumble and stay stuck for your entire life. But you got to make that decision. Are you going to stay stuck or are you going to let it equip you for what God has for you?